Hey guys, it's Wade again with yet another project update. I went ahead and set the aft avionics cover and the aft nose cover right there. The white thing on. It's not actually mounted. I just set it in place as well as the canopy. The canopy is not mounted either. It's just resting there. The winglets, both the upper and the lower on each side, are completely glassed and installed. The rudders are cut out on each side. The pockets for the hinges on each side are glassed as well. So they're pretty much completely done. I'll uh, show you an up close shot here in a second. As you can see, the motor is mounted as well. And uh, we'll take a look at that. Right now the lower cowling is on in a bit. I'll I'll go ahead and put the upper cowling on, which is not has not been cut or shaped in any way, shape, or form at all. So it's going to be raw, but that's going to be the uh, next major push is getting both of the cowlings tweaked. i got to do a little bit on the lower cowling. I'll show you some stuff on that. And then um, go ahead and completely mount the upper cowling. And then these seams right here between the outer strake and the wing, I'll get that dialed in as uh, I start finishing the strake and the wing. And then this seam back here between the strake and the wing, uh, go ahead and uh, get that leveled out and nice and dialed in. <clears throat> as well as the cowling in this area right here, of course, for the upper cowling. All right, so we'll do a little quick walk around. I just put the rudder return springs in today. Now one thing as far as the rudders being mounted is I only had six K1003 cam, uh, not cam locks, I'm sorry, uh, the nut plates left. And so uh, I put those on order last week, but they have not yet come in yet. So I went ahead and just put one in each of the hinges for the rudder. So I'm gonna to have to spend about an hour, maybe two, once those come in and finish putting all the hard points to secure the hinges on the rudder. Now, as far as glassing or any type of uh, tasks left to do besides finishing and painting on both the winglets and the rudder, it's kind of hard to get this, uh, of course, with this side shot like this, but um, really the only thing left to do is this area right here. I'm going to make the, I'm going to extend that out, make it look nice. And then I'll, uh, mount these guys on the end of the wings right there. And, uh, that should look pretty nice and snazzy. Again, I have weights in the nose, probably about 150 pounds, just to make sure that we're, we're good as far as both the wings and the engine being on with the nose gear extended all the way forward and down but uh there's no port on the wings at all just as if it was you know ready to fly sitting in the hangar or sitting out on the ramp obviously the nose would be down you can see the bottom cowling is installed so this these are the mike melville carbon fiber cowlings they have the barcoot arm pit intake. Mike Melville had an O360 or an IO360 in these cowlings and he had quite a significant bump back here for the alternator and uh, I really don't need that much space so I'll, I'll probably still have a little bit of a bump for the alternator but I'm going to reduce that down greatly. One issue I am having that I'm talking to Clinton at uh, Custom Aircraft Parts who made up these um, exhausts is you can see that they're uncomfortably low sitting very close, especially on the left side. They're not nearly as bad over on the right, but uh, definitely going to have to have these things cut, you know, retweaked as far as how they're sitting inside the cowling because it's just way too low. This is a really tight cowling. 
Uh, I don't know why my cowling is so far up because on the edge here from the original lower cowling, I trimmed a max maybe 3 16 inch off each side, so it wouldn't have pushed it down any more than that. Uh, the engine is a 320 case. It's a strokered ECI crankshaft, uh, and then it has the ECI cylinders. These are the um, nickel nitride, I believe that's what they're called, cylinders. I'm running a PMAG on one side, and then I have the electro air, electronic ignition. So on both sides, I have the electronic ignition. You can see right here, I have the fuel injection. That's a, I don't know if you can see down in there, but there is a Silverhawk fuel injection servo. I have a BNC starter, and then... I just showed you just a bit ago, I have the 40 amp BNC alternator. This is a one of the smaller diameter, slightly lighter weight flywheels. And then um, I think it's Vance out of Texas. I have the 8 inch prop extension that he made up for me. Um, I also, since I'm talking about the engine right here, have the... Uh, BNC SD8 8 to 10 amp backup alternator on the vacuum pump pad. So that it, oh I will note that I have a superior cold air induction sump on the bottom. So where I'm pointing right here, I have a cold air induction. This cylinder right here, because of the way it's situated. This cold air induction pipe coming into the intake manifold on cylinder number two is causing clearance issues. So I had to notch the cowling right here. The cowling just, it was sticking down about a half an inch. It just wasn't going on. So I'm going to trim this just a hair on the edge and then I'll be glassing over this and then I'll just reshape the whole cowling to take into account this guy right here. Didn't really want to have to do any trimming or cowling work on the bottom. Thankfully I didn't go to final paint. I realized that I was probably going to be stripping off a lot of this paint. I'm going to shoot this. I'm not going to use the boat paint. Uh, just as the same thing with the canopy. It kind of looks good from this distance right here but it's not worthy of being on the top part of the plane so again the exhausts are in but they're fairly low compared to this cowling i'm uh, gonna see if i can uh, rework that over the next month month and a half maybe send them off back to el cajon to clinton and have them once we dial everything in including the upper cowling and it's installed make sure we know exactly what our our variables are uh, we'll retweak these exhaust pipes and then and then get them on fix them back on all right over <clears throat> to again it's kind of hard to show you i'll do a, a a long distance shot here in a minute but um i did want to point out this is something that airy glance on his site caught i'm glad he did so my rudder return spring is at about water line 43 it's supposed to be per plans at waterline 25 which is right about in here however if you look at uh, jim weir's instructions on installing the comm antenna he warns us that putting anything at as far as metal anywhere near the ends of our our uh, antenna leads really wreak havoc on the antennas i believe when the original rudder was this you know little square looking thing down here you had the rudder return spring and then the high performance rudders came into play before or about the same time that we started putting our antennas vertically as far as our car antennas vertically in the winglets so however that played out i believe and i don't know this for a fact but I, i'm thinking that the uh, rudder return spring always just stayed at waterline 25 and if you don't know or you don't know what you don't know if you have decent enough uh, reception and your radio is working okay you may not know that it would be a lot more optimized 
according to Jim Weir, if you're in this middle area right here, there's virtually no effect of metal on this antenna. But you get towards one end or the other, start putting metal down there, and uh, according to Jim Weir, it really jacks it up. So, this is the rudder return spring in here. And then I do have the hidden bell horns and the rudder cables are rigged down the wing into the engine compartment here as you can see now a long time ago i had one of the old guard tell me to just pick up uh, i have the single spade here and then there's a double spade that goes over it and i just put one little you know, a connector in here to hold these things together. So I'm not going to have the traditional long, easy aluminum break, you know, quick disconnect for the engine compartment area. But try to get you lined up over here. And then I'll pull this rudder cable. And then let's go and do the same thing over here on the right side. So there's a little bit of cleanup that I need to do as far as the edges. Uh, I still need to put my wooden stops in there. And uh, of course, again, the K1003 nut plates on the hinges. But beyond that, everything's pretty much done. Just have to finish these rudders. The gaps out here, because there's such a sharp angle down here, oops, sorry, the gaps down here, there's a little bit of a smile down here, but I am going to follow James Redmond's lead, because I know there's a lot of washout that comes up from underneath the wing here, uh, if you do oil tests, it actually, you know, it'll drive, that pressure drives the oil up a lot up this rudder, it disrupts a lot of the airflow. So, James Redman and um, and my buddy Dave Barinholtz down in Australia, you just put a, you put a little fairing in here, and that'll actually hide that um, that gap right there. It's not bad. I mean, I, I I'm not concerned about it. I actually love the look of how the trailing edge just dives into the winglet. But if you if you look and you and you see people that are showing oil flow tests it definitely there's uh, there's an issue with with the air spilling up and causing disruption of airflow across uh, both the back part of this winglet here and definitely on the rudder on the lower part so uh, gonna cheat a little bit and use that fairing to hide uh, this little bit of a gap right here on each side Okay, let me throw the upper cowling on. We'll take a look at that. So here we have the upper cowling set in place. Again, it definitely needs to be trimmed on all sides. There needs to be the original flange since Mike Melville put this on his bird that he had the original cowlings on. One of his requirements was that he wanted to be able to cam lock the cowling down, not just on the wings but not have a flange on the front that went inside the, uh, you know, the turtle deck or D deck or whatever you want to call it. It didn't go underneath that lip, but just went flat on top all the way around. I will have the same thing. I will have a screw as per the, on the advice of Wayne Blackler, both on the bottom cowling and the top, right on this leading edge right here, center of mass, I'll have one actual screw and then the cam locks just in case. I happen to lose any because there's a lot of pressure right there so that should help in losing any cam locks you also note that on each side of the melville cowling there's a little shoulder and this extends down that's why i ran the the vent lines for the fuel tank vent lines coming external because this little shoulder right here will come down right to about this corner right here and it'll fan out here and it'll go up here and it'll cover these fuel vent lines. So there's the bottom cowling from the left side of the aircraft. We'll go around.
And again, please remember this is not set in place at all as far as how the final configuration is going to be. This whole area right here will have to be completely reworked. If you look at Mike Melville's Swing Bird, this actually, this drop off right here, there is no lip. This right, a lot of this will get cut off here. And this is pretty much vertical in this area right up to about right here. And then you just have this short little lip right here that goes straight. So, in fact, the cam locks, there's about three of them. They're on the bottom of this ver of this where this turns and goes vertical. So there's a, a good little bit of vertical edge right here that uh, will have to be glassed into place. There will be a little bit more of a gap here on each side. Uh, this will be lower. To, or right about there just a tiny bit lower but these will be the way they'll flare out again uh it's hard to describe it um i will of course do updates in the future but <clears throat> here is the top cowling from the right side and again i'll just point out that there is a shoulder here and that will cover up the external view vent, uh, fuel vents Note that the way the canopy is sitting, it's sitting high, mainly because this uh, the canopy is taped up at the hinge, so the, the canopy hinge is literally just sitting on top of the, uh, the aft hinge there. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Just wanted to do a quick update. I'm going to start making a lot of mess in the shop here, and I'm going to get rolling on pulling the both cowlings on and off, on and off, and doing a lot of tweaking and so it'll probably be a good three four or five weeks before i do another video update so that's pretty much it i just wanted you to i wanted to show you specifically the winglets and the rudders that are 95 plus percent complete and that's about it so hey thanks for watching cheers